I was knocked down by a wave and I thought I was drowning. You know, water can throw you for a loop. Sometimes, as much as we love water, as much as we need water, as much as life's sustainability requires water, the same thing that is so necessary for our lives is as deadly as can be. One of the things I wanted to discuss with you, it came to my mind. God reminded me of a day when I was on the beach. Everybody was along shore, sitting there on the sand, on their little blankets, under the umbrellas, having a good time. And yours truly had to get into the water because yours truly happens to love water. Okay, love being in it. So listen, one of the brothers hollered, and I don't remember who it was. They hollered, okay, everybody, don't go out too deep. Be careful. There's a riptide. Now, that means the current looks like it's going out or coming in. Current looks like it's coming in. But there's a rip current. There's an undercurrent that will pull you out. And before you know it, you look up and everybody looks like little ants on the beach. You went, wait a minute. I wasn't swimming out. I was swimming in. Yeah, they can be a little scary if you're not prepared for it and if you can't swim that well. Okay. But, you know, the funny thing is the same water that can be a blessing can also be a curse. And the same water that can be a curse has the same potential to be a blessing. And sometimes it depends on the decisions you make. Split second decisions. And what you do with the water. Do you fight it or do you cooperate with it? Let it work for you instead of you working against it. Making it your enemy. You don't want to do that. Listen to this. When I was young, I remembered hearing people say this one thing. It is not water necessarily that can drown you. It's panic. Panic kills so many people. That's why God says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. If you don't know what to do, if you can't think while you're in the middle of a crisis and you freak rather than think, somebody may die. It might even be you. Now, the reason I'm talking about this is because we have no idea what direction this country is going. But if we look at it in the spiritual sense, it looks like it's going down a very deep spiral. So we're going to deal with water right now. I was out there playing in the water at the beach. We're back at the beach making a point, so stay with me. I'm splashing around. I'm having a ball. The sun was shining beautiful. The sky was deep blue and the clouds looked like little cotton candies you could pick out of the sky. I was having a ball, y'all. Okay. So here I am swimming and swimming and swimming on my back and swimming on my side and floating and oh, I was just having a ball. Except when that water gets in my mouth. And it's like, Ugh. But anyway. So here I am having fun. And the same thing the guy warned us about. I looked up and it was like, where is everybody? Where is the beach? 
I didn't realize that tide had taken me so far out. So now I'm trying to swim in. And it comes to my mind, swim diagonally. Don't fight the water and swim against it, which means perpendicular to the, or let me see. Don't work against the tide. Instead of fighting it head on, bucking heads with the tide and the, and the uh, current, go diagonally with it and you won't feel as much resistance. Now, I wasn't even a Christian, you guys. I wasn't saved at that time. But I know to this day that God planted that thought in my mind because nobody had told me that ever. So I, it's working. <clears throat> I'm getting tired, but it's working. And all of a sudden, I get into the point where my feet can almost touch the ground. And now the waves are rougher when you get closer to shore, right? All of a sudden, this big wave, just when my feet find some bottom. All of a sudden, a big wave I did not see coming. The way life happens. Slapped me in the back of my head, and next thing I knew, I was in the water, under the water, tossed all around in it. And all during the tossing, I was tired, you guys. I wanted to breathe, and I started in my mind to panic. And I kept saying, No, if I panic, I die. I can't panic. I had to talk to myself and fight against my natural instincts to survive. And I had to force myself to be still. You know the scripture, Psalms 46, be still and know that I am God. So listen to what happens. I thought to myself, deliberate thinking now, to fight against the temptation to breathe in water and to fight against the temptation to just freak out and panic. I thought to myself, if I am still, while the wave settles down, I'm going to hit something somewhere on my body, which means I have settled to the sand. Once I feel the sand, whether it's on my head, on my side, behind me, in front of me, or under my feet, make sure my feet go where the sand is. And then bend your knees and push up with all your might. And that's what I did. All of a sudden, I'm waiting and waiting and I feel this wall. Felt like a brick wall. Walked up and bumped me. And when I put my hand there, there was the sand. And I rolled around till my feet were facing the sand. And I felt like I was sideways. I had no sense of up and down, no sense of direction whatsoever. And I took my, my hands and put them up over my head and bent my knees and shot with all I could like a bullet up through that water. And I didn't have to go as far as I thought. But let me tell you, when my head broke the surface, <gasps> oh boy, you talk about sucking in some wind. I flipped on my back and just floated and rested. I was so tired. But here's the funny part. When I looked up, I looked to the side. I realized I'm right near shore. That wave worked for me and took me all the way into shore. So when I, I said, oh, I don't have to rest. Let me get up before I get sucked out again. And I stood up on my feet, and the water was only up to here. And I was able to walk my way right on out of that water. And that was the end of swimming for me for the day. But I could have drowned had I panicked. Now, my point in saying this is, when life comes up and slaps you upside the head and knocks you topsy-turvy and you have no sense of up or down, take a minute 
Get your bearings. Think before you react. Reacting without your mind switch being turned on can turn your life switch off. Trust me on that one. More people die because of panic than for any other reason. Some people kill other people panicking because when they come to help them, they will drown that person trying to save themselves because they don't get that if they just be still, that person will tell them what to do and will get them both safe. You hear what I'm saying? So when things start happening, happening around this country, what if there's a war? What if uh, things go south in a very bad way? It may just happen in certain locations. We don't know that. But the first thing we have to do before we, we decide to react and survive at any cost, we better pray. Because God has a better brain than we do. And he can tell us in a split second what to do. If we just stop. Even if we don't think to pray, do you know God would tell us what to do like he did me? I wasn't even praying, you guys. Think. Be still and think. And above all, pray. Don't be too proud to talk to God. Don't act like you don't need him because he may decide not to talk. You don't want that. So I just say all that to say, you need to survive. You need to thrive. You need to, to be su sustainable. But you can't sustain yourself if you're busy panicking. If you're running, putting out this fire, running, putting out that fire, and you're reacting to this, and you're running from that, and you don't know what to do, and oh, all hell is breaking loose in your life, and, and, and the, the marbles are breaking loose from your brain. You're just going to live a life of chaos and heartbreak and confusion and destruction. This right now is the time to pray. Ask God to settle your nerves, calm you down, because he promised to guide and take care of his own. Do you belong to him? Have you been adopted and engrafted into the body of Christ? Or are you so proud and so self-contained that you don't need a God to help you? We are all going to need God's blessings, even you. Be blessed. Don't be stressed. In the name of Jesus.